young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey guys, today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. Check one, two. Hey, hey. <laughs> Check. All right, it's finally working. There we go. All right, let's roll this thing. What's up, everybody? Well, I guess I should say good morning, good afternoon, or even good evening. No matter what time or day you're listening to the Justin Moore podcast, we appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm your old buddy, old pal, JR the Handler. Across from me is the 2 and 0. Cardinal and White wearing, nestled nicely in the hills. The uh, three and O now. That's right, three and O. I forgot the game last week. Yeah, three and O sitting, uh, sitting pretty in Cardinal up, nestled in the Ozark Mountains of Northwest Arkansas. My brother <laughs> Justin Moore. How's it? How's it feel on a, on a Monday to be talking about a three and O Razorback Club, Just? Well, it feels foreign. Uh, it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually doing a radio interview at a sports talk station back home uh, this morning. And they said, Hey, you know, when the last time we were four and oh, and I was like, no, when was it? 2003. Wow. Wow. Damn near 20 years. Damn near 20 uh, years. But yeah, well, I mean, we got a really, really tough, the toughest test we've had yet, uh, this, this upcoming week against A&M. They're really, really good. They got athletes all over the field. Um, you know, their defense is really, really nasty. Uh, their offense has struggled. They got a really young O line. Uh, they're playing their backup quarterback because Haynes King, their highly touted starting quarterback, went down with a broken tibia. Uh oh. Um, a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I think we got a good chance. We're ranked 16th now, oh, yeah. which is the highest we've been nice. ranked in a while. Uh, they're ranked seventh. I think the line is at like five, five and a half right now. So I like our chances. I mean, we'll nice. see, we'll see what happens, but it, it you know, yeah. Jr. we're, we're right about to begin murderers row. So we got number seven, a and M. Oh yeah. Then we go on the road next week or the following week, number two, Georgia which you and I will be at that game, and maybe we'll do a podcast yep. from there, depending on how the game yep. goes. <laughs> but um, we'll get to go to that game. So number seven, number two, Georgia at Georgia. Then number 13, I think they're 13th right now, uh, at Ole Miss. Then then I think we have a bye maybe. Uh, we'll need it by then. But, uh, right, right. Um, so just, just – No, all, all, no all excuse top. me, we don't. Auburn after that. Uh, so we go oh, wow. A&M number seven, Georgia number two at Georgia, 13 at Ole Miss at Ole Miss, Auburn, which I don't know that they're ranked or they're not. They just had a really close game with Penn State at Penn State. That's at home. Then we get a bye. So it's just if we yeah. go two and two in that stretch, that's a great that's a great right. uh, month, you know. Yeah. Well, I wish we could have talked to Granger about it this weekend. I know we yeah. uh we did a show this past weekend with Granger and he's an Aggie, but um they had a four thirty AM <sighs> flight back to Texas. So I about Chris texted me the next morning and he said, Sorry, man, we were out. We had to be up super early. So but that would have been cool to get his thoughts on that too, because uh both t both clubs in transition, but but you know, they've gotten back there in the last couple of years. They got a They've got to do something with Jimbo there now. You know, it's something's got to happen, and uh, and you guys rocking on along. This should be a, a a collision. Talk about Murder's Row. We had our first little taste. Is uh, we I always say you just when SEC ball hits, buddy, you just don't know. I mean, we won by two points to Florida, and they got. I mean, they took us to the wire. Everything we wanted. So uh, so you, SEC is just a whole different brand of ball when it's time to play. I hope uh, Texas and Oklahoma are ready. Yeah, I was amazed honestly. I I, I had done some. Uh some some shows and podcasts and that kind of stuff last week you know predicting outcomes uh against the spread and i think you guys were uh, i don't know 15 and a half, I think. 15 and a half 14 something like that yep. i said man I, I think alabama wins by probably three four touchdowns and we were we were watching on the bus we were stunned i mean you know it, it was amazing because you guys usually score at will i mean and 
uh, Florida was uh, able to stop y'all running the ball, and they yep. and and even more surprising to me, they were able to run the ball on you guys, which I was surprised. I mean, look, look, look. Yeah, Alabama won the game. That's the most important thing. But I was, right. I, but was, was a, I was, was definitely, I was a little a tough challenge. I was a little surprised that uh, it was as close as it was, for sure. I mean, and if well, they coach, if they get that two point conversion, it's a whole yeah. different game. I mean, we're talking about o- oh, yeah. overtime, but Just they the field goal, but they didn't. They missed, or they missed the extra point. You know, yeah. Well, like Coach Saban always says, they have scholarship athletes over there. They're going to be ready to play. If we don't play our best game, we're not going to be successful. But luckily, we played well enough to be successful. And I'm sure he was hot. Could you imagine being at practice this week? Well, it's going to allow him to really coach those guys up. That, hey, yeah. he's going to be able to say, look, if you guys want to follow in the tradition of, you know, the last 15 years or whatever, you got to be way better. You just got to yeah. be. Yeah, uh-huh. that, I saw one of his assistant coaches from uh, West Virginia saying that that uh, he liked it there because they would lose some, so that gave him a chance to t- to do what you say, coach him up. And that was a Michigan stuff. State. Yeah, Michigan I heard. State, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Did you hear that too? Yeah. Yeah. He said. Uh, so anyway, hey. They said. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They liked it when they lost, or he liked it when they lost, so that he could really coach. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he could <laughs> get his coaching in. Yeah. Well, speaking of traditions, an uh, old tradition that's become a new tradition, and may I may have a new tradition here soon too. Um, so people have wrote in and commented on on uh, on social media using the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and sending me messages on jrthehandler.com chat page and stuff like that, talking about the TikTok version of Beta Hook. So we've known about this for a little while. And this past weekend, we met a uh, <laughs> a very cool, interesting young man, Mr. Logan Webb, TikTok sensation himself. And uh, so he talked to me about TikToks. I told him I downloaded it one time, but I never, you know, it's been a year or so ago when it first came out. Then I heard it was Chinese, so I dropped it. So <laughs> anyway, I don't know now. The world's so screwed up. Who knows? But uh, I was talking to him about it and asking about the beta hook thing and this and that. And uh, so uh, today, before we ran the show, I thought. What is all this about the beta hook TikTok thing? Because Logan says he wants me to get on TikTok, so I'm like, ah, let me think about it. Let me let me see what I saw. I see what Uncle Dale does, and I'm not dressing up in tie dyed and boots and cut off jorts like Uncle Dale does and dance around. <laughs> but it, I might do it if there's something cool to do or something to see. I don't know. I'm very early stages. Y'all can let me know that. Should Jr. the Handler get on TikTok? No, JM's not, but you know if I've got one, he's going to be close around, so he'll he'll get some cameos on there for sure. Uh, <laughs> let me know what y'all think about that. But so I finally looked on one, and I just I just went basic Google search, uh, Justin Moore TikTok, and Beta Hook pops up, and it's basically just a bunch of kids, like I call them kids, like college age kids, dancing to TikTok, doing the hook in the mouth thing, and a little dance they do. But there's like a gajillion videos of it. And some of them have yeah. millions of views and stuff. But they it sped up about, yeah. I don't know, 100 clicks faster than y'all do it. It's like the bluegrass uh, it, version or something. It really is, yeah. It's, it's, like like, the Rod, yeah. it's like the Roger all wound up bluegrass yeah. version. Yeah. Uh, but they, they, they're doing it everywhere. I'll, I'll, you know, just people at home and car. I mean, it's crazy. It's people a lot of effort into it. So it's pretty neat. So I'm going to be looking at some of that. Who knows? We may end up doing something with somebody from the – TikTok world that's beta hook savvy uh, at some point in the future, but uh, pretty interested to see how many young folks are getting down. And some of these are like before the show, and then it's just people at their house or in their car, and all kinds of different people do it. It's it's crazy. Yep. Most of them can't dance, but but not that I can dance either. Uh, so that's cool. But uh, so anyway, I'm gonna check into that. But yeah, got to hang out with Logan. What an interesting guy. So I look on. His, so I go to his. Uh, tiktok page here and glancing through some stuff i didn't know he was coming to the steelers game the next day i hate we missed him there uh but he sure had a good time at the show um up in P- washington pennsylvania outside pittsburgh saturday night and uh watching some of this stuff is it's just ridiculous it's amazing what people watch yeah. on television or on the computer but. i tell you what one of the one of the most notable actually to do it was y'all's all sec pitcher yeah, in softball montana, montana fouts, fouts. Yeah. Um, yeah. which was kind of cool, and because I watched her pitch this year, and she had a really great player, great pitcher, and um, Alabama's really good uh, this year, um, and uh, so yeah, that it, it, there all, was all some kinds of people. yeah, there was some pro 
baseball players and some different it's just weird man it's just you know that song is 10 11 years old so to see it have a resurgence yeah. like this uh because of some kind of social media that you and i have no idea about uh yeah it's, it's kind of wild and and yeah meeting logan i mean <laughs> i mean you and i are old <laughs> enough to be his dad uh, yeah right good, really good kid <laughs> Yeah, but just I don't a country music fanatic. Just a, uh, he was a trip now. He, he was a character. Yeah, yeah he was. Sure. Yeah, hey, we got to chop it up, and I saw some uh, of our podcast listener fans uh, that got to talk to him in the crowd and take some pictures and do stuff. And they had a good time meeting him there. Hey, speaking of, uh, I got a. Uh, I was going to run through a couple of just uh, things I had on Instagram Messenger and uh, on my uh, handler's page here to just chit chat about while we're talking. That reminded me, I just got a. Um, a message here yesterday or day before yesterday from uh, an Arkansas softball legend, uh, Tiffany Woolley Moeller. She just said, uh, just want to say hi. I listened to the Justin Moore podcast league. He mentioned DMAT. He got inducted to the hall, to the uh, hall of honor this weekend in Arkansas. I did too, as a former softball player, I thought about asking Justin to be my special guest Friday night so he could come here DMAC speak, but realized y'all had shows. That would have been awesome. I know, right? Next time, Tiffany, just send the invite, and then if we can be there, we will. But uh, thank you for being a great Razorback. That's that's awesome. Very cool. Congratulations. I may have to cir- I may have to circle back and get her to come on and jump on here with us for a few minutes. Yeah, and talk about how that, that I, would be. That'd I, be cool. I know my daughters would love to have the opportunity to speak with uh, a legendary Razorback softball player. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to, might have to make that happen. And that's a lot of this stuff, guys. Once we kind of get back to our normal tour schedule, we're going to have some more fun stuff like that and some different guests back on the Zoom machine like we used to. We have just been running and hey, speaking of running uh, wanna, Speaking of great Razor, before we go any further today, I, I do yeah. want to say thank you to Quinn Grovey for being a part of the podcast yes. last week. And, look, I yes. know it was, it was really Razorback-leaning last week. As we beat our – our biggest rival beat them down and um the opportunity to speak with uh not only a great razorback a southwest conference legend at queen grovey uh but um also just, the color around football guy the color analyst for the razorbacks and an all around you know um just super knowledgeable football guy yeah uh, was was exactly. awesome so yeah, and him and him the, the era when he played and stuff too with the Troy Aikman stuff and the Andre Ware and stuff. Any, anybody that's a football oh, yeah. person will be. I mean, he was he's and he still knows all these cats. He said he's too busy to hang with them. But anyway, yeah, thanks Q for coming on. He he was he was great. He was great. I, I don't think anybody would enjoy. And that. I and yeah. again, uh, we talked about it on the podcast, but I was on his podcast also um, called the Razorback Daily for for Razorback fans who listen and watch this podcast. I mean, you'll love it. I mean. It's just him and Matt Zimmerman with them last week. They have great guests, but those two together are just a trip. So, um, but yeah. yeah, check that out. It's called the Razorback Daily. Comes out no doubt every single day. So, well, actually, we're going to take a quick break right now. And we'll come back. We'll do a few more uh, Instagram messages and some uh, stuff off the handler chat page. Thank y'all as always for tuning in to the Justin Moore podcast. Couldn't do it without you guys and gals out there in podcast land. Uh, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, notification button, all that fun stuff. When you do tune into the Justin Moore podcast, that way uh, all of their sponsors and uh, the uh, equation masters out there that figure out how this stuff works makes it look good on us. So we appreciate y'all for doing that. And use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast uh, when you're interacting with us on social media. I'm JR the Handler on Twitter and Instagram, maybe even on TikTok soon. Uh, <laughs> that's Justin Cole Moore on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast if you have questions or comments or anything you want us to uh, chit chat about or maybe a guest you want us to have on or anything like that. And uh, we'll be right back here in a few minutes on the Justin Moore Podcast. I want to give a quick shout out to Bobcat Company, who really does make a job, any job that is, easier. They got everything from skid steers to compact tractors, utility vehicles, zero turn mowers, and everything in between. Their products are designed to make your lives easier. I like that. Which means spending more time with your family and doing the other fun things you love. Y'all know how big of a deal that is to me. Make sure you visit bobcat.com to see what products might be a good fit for your property. 
Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy AR, and Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy AR. But check us out; it's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer. Shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning in to the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great. Inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including Brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler, because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me, you can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Thanks for tuning in, as always, each and every week. We're glad to be here with y'all in podcast land. Uh, we were doing some uh, just little message stuff, just kind of chit chat. Really didn't have a whole lot planned for this week, just got off the road. Uh, we'll go back and talk about the shows we did and the shows we have coming up. I just figured we'd hit a few of these uh, messages I had right now. Uh, but continue to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and send those in because, like I said, a lot of these questions that I know would take us a long time to answer, I'm going to compile those up and we're going to do a whole Q&A episode here uh, here soon. So, uh, But this was a cool one. Uh, Katie Osmussen uh, sent in um, a message just saying, wow, that's all I can say. I have always been a fan of Justin. I've been a fan of the podcast since day one. Listen to every episode. I'm currently 27 minutes into this week's episode and had to pause to wipe my tears. Listening to Greg speak is amazing. Would have been open to, wouldn't have been open to his perspective without you and Justin. Keep on doing what you guys do. So bummed I'll miss the upcoming show in Minnesota. Catch you next time. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Yeah, that was Greg Stubbe, uh, Green Beret, a couple weeks ago. We were at the deer camp uh, with Lucas Hogue and that bunch uh, at Camelot Ridge. Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of people send messages like that and stuff. Yeah, it really was. It was uh, it's powerful when you talk to those guys who really did the deed. And, uh, yeah, we can't thank him enough for coming on. And we're going to have him on again at some point in the future. But, uh, yeah, what a what an American hero. And uh, I know you and Greg, we, I was going back, we were talking about the show we did this past weekend with Granger uh, and the one with Michael Ray and Chase Bryant, all all made sure to make mention of our uh, military and first responders and stuff during each of the sets. Um, I think that's very cool that we all make sure to make sure those men and women out there get a little love when uh, whenever you guys get up on your, when you can, when you've got the big mic and can, can reach people. Yeah, I, I always mean, enjoy you guys doing that. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think music i think country music artists um and probably all genres but in particular country music artists i i feel as though you know as a community we all um do all that we can to support those men and women and um i 
I echo the sentiments um, about Greg. I mean, it, it was it was fantastic. I've had mine, as I'm sure you have, Jr. That have, have texted me after hearing that particular uh, episode. Going, man, I've really enjoyed this one and this one and this one, but that was amazing. His story was amazing. Yep. And, and it was, it, 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 you know, you're just kind of taken aback uh, by, by guys who have actually, and gals, men and women, who have actually laid it all on the line, you know, in, yep. in these crazy spots in the world uh, so that we can do this right here, just BS together. Yep. And we can go out on a uh, tour and, and we can go to, you know, football games or, or whatever yeah. well, the case may well, be. Well, like Greg said, when his buddies would say, I wish I was brave enough to do what you would do, he said, no, I don't want everybody to do what I do. It's not for everybody. He said, I want to go do this. I want you all to keep America how it was when I left. So when I get back to America, it's the America I left. That makes me tear up thinking about it. Pretty so y'all, amazing. Y'all think about that when y'all are doing your day-to-day stuff out there. Talk to God and remember that America is is only American. We're only free because of our United States military and the grace of God. So think about that when you're doing stuff every day. Re- remember when these guys and gals do get home. Make America great for them so when they get home, they, it's what they remember um, for sure. Hey, speaking of that, we'll go back to that in a minute because we got to meet a bunch of servicemen and women uh, Sunday at the Steelers game. But I, yeah. I got one more little uh, – Message I want to uh, shout out before we go talk about the shows we did and that we're going to do. Uh, this was a cool one I got from Daniel Apple. He goes, hey, y'all, just wanted to give a quick shout out to both of you from Germany. He wow. said, huge fan of the podcast and Justin's music. Can't wait for the new album, hopefully coming this year, and maybe see a show when you're able to travel, when we're able to travel to the U.S. in October. All the best, Danny. So, uh, thanks to uh, our listeners from uh, overseas uh, in Europe and all all around the world. Thank you, guys and gals. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Thank you, Danny. I, I appreciate that, man. I'm I'm glad that you dig the music and the podcast. And um, yeah, it, it's just it, it it always blows my mind, Jay. Or I don't know about you, but like we do this thing, and it takes up uh, you know an hour, hour and a half of our day once a week, and then you think, well, you know, there's there's a few people out there listening or watching and they dig it or whatever. And, and then you read something like that from a, a gentleman from, from Germany and watches it, listens to it every week and just can't wait to come to a show. It's just, it's kind of mind blowing yeah. really the reach yep. that, uh, mm-hmm. that the country music has, I mean, we're yep. cast because of country music. It's not because of me. It's not because of Jr. Um, you know, it's because country music is is powerful and important to people, and so we're. I, you know, I think I speak for both of us. We're just we're just blessed to be a a small part of it. You know. Oh, absolutely. Me, a very, 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 very tiny part. Uh, hey, and, uh, you know, and two, you know, we, we talk about the evils of, of technology and social media and all that stuff. But like even that, you know, back in the day, I was watching a, a documentary last night on Howlin' Wolf. And it was just how, you know, how it was so hard to get stuff to people and, and, and get stuff around. And uh, now we can reach people in Germany on this thing that we do at our houses and can package yeah. it. And Cody takes it and sends it out to the interwebs. And next thing you know, Danny in Germany can listen. Uh, one more real quick I want to do here because it's uh, I, I got it a, a couple of weeks ago, actually a month or so ago. Sorry, I've been on the run. Uh, Connor Broderick, a uh, huge fan of Justin and absolutely love his music. I'm attending the show in Syracuse. I want to get his autograph. Sorry I missed you on that, Connor. If you didn't get it at that show, hit us up next time we're in town, and we'll make sure to meet up and uh, uh, do that. We haven't been doing any meet and greets um, this year because of everything going on, so maybe hopefully next year uh, we'll, we'll get back to that and we'll hook you up and you can We'll come get it signed. I'm sure we'll be up that way. We love that part of New York. So sorry about that, Connor. We'll catch you next time, buddy. Uh, anyway, yeah, just so I, we were talking about the shows, and I thought, why not? Let's just talk about uh, the shows we did this past weekend. We had a yeah, good run. Yeah, for sure. I, I got to go home for a day or two um, since our last podcast. Uh, but this past weekend what was our first one here. Sylvania, Ohio, Centennial Terrace. That was that was cool. Uh, uh, Josh 
God dang it, I can't remember his last name off the top of my head. Super cool guy. He's from not far from there, but Nashville based now. Been there a while. They opened the show for us acoustic. Really, really good. Really cool venue. Uh, good hang with those guys all day. I think that's the one that had the uh, the food truck that you and yeah. Ella like. When, by, yeah, and we brought Ella. Tell everybody about we had we brought. Ella. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Ella, who's eleven, she'll be twelve in February. Um, she's going. The bus pulls up at the house at I don't know nine ten o'clock something like that. Um, I guess it was Wednesday night. This past Wednesday night. She goes, yeah. Dad, can I please go? Can I please, please, please go? Plus, I'm like, Well, go ask your mom. It's fine with me. And, you know, I'm like, well, you need to go to school, but they can do it all online now, obviously. And uh, I just kind of determined, you know, she's almost 12 years old. She ain't going to want to hang out with dad or be seen with me, you know, much longer. So if she's oh, begging yeah. to go with me, I said, come on. Yeah. And, um, and so it was a lot of fun. She, you know, one day, uh, was, was the day you're talking about at Sylvania incredible, uh, catering catering. Yeah. yeah it was a, it was a food truck, food trolley <laughs> trolley. Yeah, yeah, it, was old, it was a retired um, trolley from, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, I believe is where that yeah, trolley you, I mean, you had a bison burger for, for lunch, uh, phenomenal dinner was, uh, steak and, uh, a really good chicken dish, um, uh, roasted potatoes, uh, some mac, mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. It was off the charts. Um, they had milkshakes. They made, a, they had they made Ella like yeah milkshakes. They made her. They made her uh, mac and cheese. Uh, they made her chicken, chicken tender. Fingers. I mean, it was just uh, yeah. it was over the top. Uh, it was really yeah, good. It was great. And there was a really cool like they called it a quarry, a, a like a rock quarry, but it was like a. Um, they had made it into a, a pond, basically a really cool, right. deep pond. And we went down there, saw a bunch of fish and, and you could tell it had been at one point, um, maybe, a a camp or something, or, or some type of water park or something. Um, it, it wasn't open any longer, but it was still cool. Gotcha. We, Elle and I went and checked it out. And the next day we played this, uh, this fair and yeah, the Allegan uh, County fair in Michigan, in Michigan. And, Ella and Dave and Stefan, our bass player and guitar player, lead guitar player, went out and rode rides and uh, played the stupid games and, you know, all that where they, the ring toss where they take all your money and you never oh, yeah. hang one on a bottle. Uh, but Ella loved that kind of stuff. So we did that. Oh, and yeah. then then um, the next Before day. Before that, earlier that, go back to that, that day, earlier that day, though, you and Ella and I walked around through the, uh, ex exhibits through the, yeah, uh, yeah. Ag exhibits oh yeah, all stuff, the uh, fruit cool. and, and she got, yeah, she and got to take a, probably the most amazing thing to me. I mean, I love what seeing all the, the fruits and vegetables, they were just, I mean, they're perfect. They look like a, a drawing or something. At, yeah. It looked like it was, fake it looked like a painting or something. It looked fake. Yeah. Like you said. Um, it yeah. was like the blue ribbon winners and all that, but, um, probably the most amazing thing was that we saw and we thought it was fake. I mean, yeah. you and I, I thought it was fake. I said, it's a replica. It's gotta be look at it. It's a it was a 976 pound pumpkin. I'm not pumpkin. even kidding. I mean, it, it looked like, it was, it looked like it, a lazy boy. Well, here's what I thought about. It looked like, it looked like, um, the pumpkin that they made Cinderella's carriage out of. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was huge. Oh, Ella, as a matter of fact, yes. matter of fact, I took, I took a picture of Ella sitting on it and she looked so in, I mean, it was like, I, know. I mean, he, I mean, I don't even know how to, how to even, uh, like I said, it's, I would say it's about as big as a lazy boy recliner. You guys watch, I mean, I mean, or bigger, like a, a small, a love seat. Yeah. If I you mean, can see was, this chair was, over here, if you're watching, it was like twice the size of this chair. Yeah. It yeah. Was, I could have sat in it comfortably. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was nearly it was as wide as this desk that you see. Uh, and I mean, huge. I mean, and the late, and I remember the ladies there said that with the guy who was growing those, that wasn't even his biggest. He had his biggest one taking it to some state fair or some, some other state or something. And you could tell they had delivered it on, it was sitting on a pallet. Um, mm -hmm. and it barely fit on a pallet. And for those out there watching and, and listening, you know, 
how big a pallet is. I don't know what three by three. I was gonna say four four by four, four by six, something like that. They're they're square, so I would say four four by by four, four, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, But I was thinking like it gave me anxiety thinking about like you know they picked it up with forks on a tractor, yeah, and put it in the back of a truck or something. And I'm like, oh, I would have dumped that out and split it in half. And oh yeah, yeah, we're not letting you you operate the 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 forks on that day for sure. (laughs) uh it was really cool but yeah yeah, yeah we was. we enjoyed that day we you know got got to go out and and do that and then we went road rides and all that and then next day i i played golf with some friends in uh washington pennsylvania this is where we played a show actually at a, a pseudo minor league ballpark baseball yep. field which was really cool uh with granger smith and heath sanders and uh really really neat great crowd um but i went and played golf yeah, the night before where, is the one we the night before we played with uh chase bryant and michael ray and at the right. county fair yeah That's right. but i i went and did uh played some golf uh and ella went with us and uh you know she she kept score she wanted to make sure she kept score and i fortunately i actually um in front of my daughter so i didn't look like a fool there you go you know, at one point she goes, dad, you know, you're in second place. Like you're not winning. I go, I know I'm not winning, but uh, if yeah. second out of four is not bad. I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah. Like but, dad, you're yeah. like, you're like, honey, this is different than softball tournaments. It's like, yeah, these are hard to win every one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so then yesterday, um, we're recording this on Monday. So yesterday, Sunday, uh, I'm a Steelers fan. And had the opportunity to go play our most recent number one song. We didn't have much prior to the Steelers game. We went to the Steelers game, um, which I think may have been the driving force behind Ella wanting to go on the road with us this weekend because she wanted to go to the Steelers game. (laughs) You know, we go to a lot of Razorback games, but she's never been to a Steelers game. And uh, it was a little ticked off at at me and you because we had to leave at the end of the third quarter rather than staying because uh jr had to catch a flight and we had to get home because uh, we got to leave tomorrow yeah. <laughs> but that's what she wanted yeah. to stay long enough where she didn't have to go to school today was part yeah, of part it, of too, it. I yeah, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and she missed that mentioned- window so she did a good job oh, yeah I know, because I mentioned earlier in the day, I said, you know, we got to leave in time to get you to school. She looked at me, it's like, uh-uh, I ain't got to go. I was like, you know, uh, no, not really. I go, I yeah. just got to be back for the next day. And she's so smart, she knows. She knows what she can do at school. Oh, That's yeah. the thing, too. It's so weird. I had a – one time she was she was rollerblading two nights on the stage while you were playing the entire time. She didn't want to go on stage. First night she went on stage, you tried to give her some nucks uh, while you were singing. She was sitting by Alyssa Warhawk, and she didn't want to do that. So then she didn't want to be in the spotlight anymore. So she hung backstage on her rollerblades. And mm-hmm. at one of them, I, w- I could see her. i just look, and I'd make sure she's, you know, twirling around. I'd see her little head twirling, you know, <laughs> around. I knew she, where no matter where I was moving around, I, even front of house, I could see her little head back there behind the curtain moving around. Yeah, and she wasn't so, letting but, you out of her side either, I promise you. Like, she, okay. you know, JR, obviously, um, she's close to and knows really well and, you know, knows all the guys uh yeah. on the road but not as well as jr because jr is like a family yeah. member and yeah. so i was like well if you need this or that if jr ain't around you can ask so and so or do the so she wasn't letting jr out of her side right. it's like uncle jr right. you know like yeah, she's basically like, yeah i know that's like that, that was her comfort zone so she yeah. she was making sure she kept you and yeah her, yeah her so we were both looking line, at each other yeah. and she was twirling and then one time i get up there and i didn't see her and I go around the side, and she's coming from around the back of the stage, and I'm like, huh. and she goes, I saw, I found a hole over there, and I was looking down through the stage at this big hole. I'm like, stay away from holes. <laughs> you know, it's dark back there. I'm like, I grabbed her. I say, I know you're getting big, but you're still our little baby, and you make me nervous when you do that if I can't see you. Yeah. And she's like, sorry. And I'm like, it's just weird because she is. She's about grown. I mean, especially it was different this time having her by herself without any of her sisters. Yeah. She acts even more. Grony, grown, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like a teenager, you know, she's, she's, you know, she's getting there for sure. Uh, which was great. It was cool. It was neat to hang with her. And, uh, but yeah, it's like, I know you're getting big, but you're still our little baby and you might be nervous when I don't see yeah. you. So, but she, she, the first night she said she did over a hundred spins, uh, on her rollerblades. <laughs> uh, and she only fell down once. She ran into a crane backstage. 
Uh, that made me nervous for the next night. And then the next <laughs> night she broke a record. I think she did about 200 twirls, the most twirls she said she's ever done. Yeah, all she that wanted to do was say, like, we took softball gloves. We were going to play catch. And all she wanted to do is ride or skate around on a rollerblade. So I was like, all right, whatever yeah. you want to do. But uh, yeah. speaking of Ella, um, I don't even know if I've told you this, but so about this time last year, she came up to me and she's like, Dad, can I please play football? And I'm like, football? Why? You know, she plays basketball and softball. And, and you know, quite honestly, my girls are all pretty – I mean, JR knows this, but they're all pretty rough. I mean, they're not yeah. like – I mean, they look – you know, you put them in a dress, they look beautiful, and they like to do that for church and stuff like that. But, but they're pretty – I mean, really? And, oh, yeah, for sure. And so, um, tomboys, basically. Yeah. And um, and so, she comes to me again this year. She's like, Dad, please. The coaches are begging me to play. They need a fast running back. Please, please can I play? And I'm like, I mean, I guess if, if, if that's what you want to do. But I, I, I'm, I'm like telling the coach, I'm like, Promise me she ain't going to get tackled by, like, some 200-pound sixth, sixth grader. Yeah. So, anyway, long story short, Ella's playing in her first football game tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, And I asked Kate earlier, I'm like, has she even practiced? But we're at the game yesterday, uh, and Najee Harris, former Alabama player, first-round pick of the Steelers, I mean, just tosses a guy with some oh. nasty stiff arm, and he's a running back. So I tell Ella, I'm like, hey, that right there, tomorrow, that's what you got to do. Like, either you're going to get hit or you're going to hit them. You're going to be the hammer right. or the nail. That's up to you. That's it. You got to be rough now. Sometimes so, it's just two hammers, and that hurts. And so – um, she was like, really? I go, yeah, really? Like you, it, it, I mean, it's rough. Like you gotta be like mean and you uh, gotta yeah. be, I, I, you gotta I play football ticked off. And I, yeah. And I, I played football from time I was six until I graduated high school. And, uh, I never, I love playing football, but I didn't really like the hitting. my buddy, Patrick Harden shout out. It's P Harden's birthday today. My brother, Patrick Harden, Pat back. We used to do kickoff, kickoff return, man. I, I bet I had. I mean, I don't know how many concussions I probably had just now. And he wasn't the biggest guy on the team, but he would light me up. Uh, but yeah, it's um, and and I don't and hopefully the the equipment's gotten better back then. But man, I mean, yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's a little better with the way they call stuff now and do things. But yeah, football is not. I, that's why I like basketball. I didn't get. Yeah. Dirty. I didn't like baseball as much either because I didn't like getting dirty. Basketball was perfect for me. I don't get hit. I, I don't have to get dirty. And baseball's rougher than people realize too. You can get cleated. Oh, yeah. You can get run over at the plate your catcher oh, which yeah. i was but uh anyway so ellis when got you're her, running and you're running on dirt too yeah. and pat and the bases i mean there's all kinds of stuff you could tweak and hurt and throw in and yeah anyway yeah so she's got her first game and uh in addition to her having her first game klein our youngest daughter who's seven um she begged to be a cheerleader this year which none of our girls have really i mean they've done it a little bit but that's not their thing she yeah. wants to be a cheerleader. We're like, I mean, she I, told me that the other day. All right, whatever. So, so she'll be. Ken said she was a basketball player and a softball player. Yeah. But Klein said she was going to be a cheerleader. They told me that the other day. So Klein will be a cheerleader for the first time tonight at Ella's first football game. So it should be really, wow. it should be an interesting night. And and next week we'll uh, we'll let you guys know, you know, <laughs> how it goes. I thought you, I. I thought you were going to say, and also tonight, I'm making my football coaching debut. No, that's that's out of my uh, that's out of my uh, league. There, I I, I know yeah. football because I'm a fan of football, but I never played it, as you know, because right. we didn't have it growing up. And so, right. So Ella will be the first one our fan. Well, my dad was a really good football player growing up in high school. He was a Navy brat, so he grew up all over the place and played. Uh, apparently was a pretty tough middle linebacker back in the day, but I, I can see that, you know, I don't, I, I don't can see that. I never got to see it obviously, but, uh, Old that's what I've been told. Tommy Ray. Yep. Oh yeah. I, I can see that. 
And my dad actually just sent me a text. He goes, I can't believe you're letting Ella play football. I said, well, she begged me. And I said, honestly, she's probably tougher than 99% of those boys out there, if I had to guess. So, I, I mean, yeah. I, the thing is, I, I wouldn't let my daughter play football if I didn't, like, not because she's my daughter. I mean, she, you know, Jr. I mean, she's yeah. a pretty much stud athlete, and she's yeah. Her and Kennedy Barrett are both she, rough. They like she, that. So that's the only two girls on the team. Her and Kennedy Barrett. Yeah, make it makes sense. And and Kennedy yeah. Barrett's dad is the coach. So there you right. go. And and well, really, he's the, head, he's the head football coach for the high school. Yeah, he? yeah. Him and his yeah, brother so. coach the high school yeah. junior high, and his brother Keith is the ones like we really need Ellis Wills. Can we please, <laughs> oh, Kim Chinchy, please play? And I'm like. I guess. I mean, all right, here we go. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But, so, but they're yeah. pretty tough. Well, yeah, I got. Now. I got to. I got to. I got to hear how that goes, man. Yeah, and it's different running in pads too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And I'm like, does she it's know how different. to hold the football? Does she know? I mean, has she? I don't even know. I don't. I have no idea. Yeah. Is she gonna go out there and fumble it? Is she gonna? I don't know. It's a. I mean, she's never done it. Yeah, get I mean, behind your pads. I mean, she get behind your pads. I mean, e. she hit six fifty from the left, five hundred from the right side in softball. I know she can do that. I know mm. she can go get you six eight points in a basketball game and three four steals. But football, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So I, we'll report we'll back next week. So yeah, let us know. Use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and let us know if any of you girl dads out there have uh, have <sighs> girls that play football with the boys when they're little like that. Let us know how that all goes. We'll see. So what how is this? Is, what, is this going? What, this will be um, what like Pee Wee or? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, JV. It's, it's sixth grade, so Pee Wee. Uh, I'm assuming. Gotcha. I mean, I, I hope they ain't playing like sixth, seventh, eighth graders. I mean, like. Yeah, yeah that that would still be under because what? Well, it was when I was growing up, and a lot of things changed. Yeah, once you get to seventh grade, you play junior high. But before that, or if you could make weight in Pee Wee, still you could play in the league. But for us, it was like once you got to seventh grade, you didn't want to go back and play with the little kids. Right. You, know, you wanted to play JV, even though you got murdered. I had one buddy that always shed weight so he could go back and play. He was just. It was ridiculous. Like, I'm but, thinking, uh, like, does yeah. she know which direction to run? Like, I, has she, Yeah. And, and, is she going to be going scoring for the other team? Or, like, yeah, does I she, mean, I don't know. And, like, and, does she and, know, like, when they're, they're about to hand plays. it to her? Yeah, hand it to her. To, is it, I don't know. So, we'll see. So, no, no practices. Just going to walk out there and play. Well, apparently, she's practiced a little bit at school. But I, I'm not real familiar with – with you know how much or yeah so we'll see uh, she'll be she's an athlete i mean she'll she'll do the best she can but uh i don't know it'll be interesting so yeah we got to hear we got to yeah you got to circle back with us on that and hear how all that goes uh that that'll be uh that'll be fun yeah and she may crush it i mean golly you never know you just never know um and you know all sports evolve like that that might be something that catches on next thing you know we've got women's football that's as big as you know, basketball, baseball, or yeah. softball, and all that. Never know. Um, yeah, speaking of softball, or baseball and softball combined, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, we watched uh, League of Their Own the other day. How good was that? Still a great movie, right? It's a great movie. It's it's touching. It, it, it's baseball, which I love, obviously. Um, it, great actors and actresses. Um, it's just a, it's a great story. Yeah. Um yeah, Sad. great it hits all the fields. Yeah, great movie. There. Great movie. If, yeah. if you haven't watched it, I don't know how you haven't if you're of age, but go watch it. Great movie. Yeah, Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Madonna, I mean, yeah. Rosie, Rosie O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Yeah. 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 Funny stuff. Anyway, uh and we'll <sighs> talk about that more too cuz we me and you've got two episodes of Ted Lazo to catch up on. I almost uh, I watched finally- one last night by the way, but I didn't because I'm like I gotta I wait. Too. I, 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 I got to wait on Jr. That's what I did. I saved it. Uh, I ended up watching that Howlin' Wolf documentary. It was really good. Uh, and then I finally finished the Crown. So maybe here uh, so, at some point we'll I'll get to that question I got six months ago about the Crown. But I just now finished it. I've been been busy. It was interesting. Uh, but we've got shows to do. I mean, you've got to leave tomorrow. Well, this is the shortest turnaround I've done. And talking of, I'm, I'm breaking all kinds of records this year. Longest run we've been on in ever. And then uh, the, probably the quickest turnaround for me. I come home, pay some bills, go to the dentist here in about an hour, and then uh, or about 
30 minutes and then uh and then back on the road tomorrow we've got to go to bismarck speaking we, we took a break earlier for all our fine sponsors out there thank them uh as always but we're actually going to our spot our one of our main sponsors main headquarters meeting the ceo and all that fun stuff we're going to bismarck north dakota yeah uh, a day early so we can go to the bobcat plant yeah we're uh, gonna go, so that'll be cool we'll get to go tour that plant um yeah it'll be a fun uh to, to meet those those folks and uh, kind of see how the operation works at the yep. plant the, those plants amaze me because they're so efficient you know we we've we've been sponsored by a number of um a number of companies that that have these big operations and these huge plants in these you know whether it be detroit or or chicago or in this case uh north dakota um and which they do all the all the things that they do to build these machines or or fix them or whatever it, it's pretty amazing to see and you know something we can actually take lessons from with our own um operation you know and and so yep. it's, it's pretty neat it'll be and, and it'll be good to meet the uh ceo we've we've not had a chance to do so yet so it'll be neat to uh to meet uh he or she and 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 have an opportunity to have dinner and and catch up and get to know each other a little better <laughs> yeah so yeah by the time y'all will probably see that because i'm going to take some videos uh and send to cody to put on justin's instagram uh, and Twitter, so y'all will probably see some of the factory photos before you hear this, because this won't actually air till Thursday. That night, we will be playing in Bismarck, um, North Dakota. So if you haven't got your tickets already for tonight's show in Bismarck, uh, I think there's a, I know there's some left because they opened some side seating stuff up. Uh, but that'll be fun. That's Tracy Lawrence. Um, got our buddy Noah Hicks coming to do the open the show for us. It was really cool. I got to meet Noah um, at our one of our first shows back in Murfreesboro and listen to his music after that. He's uh, I think young talented young guy from Georgia had a duet with Red Aiken, so he's gonna open the show. And then the legend Tracy Lawrence, I can't wait. Me and you, we gotta do a few meet and greet type stuff, but we are definitely gonna catch some TL show. Um, hell come high water uh, mm -hmm. for sure. And then um, you're gonna play your set with the boys, uh, and then the next night we're going to Minneapolis with the same package uh, all all this weekend. We're going to Minneapolis, Minnesota on Friday the 24th. So, uh, again, if you haven't got tickets for that show, check out uh, justinmoremusic.com or go to um, Ticketmaster, one of those links. You can find them, but go to justinmoremusic.com is your best bet. Uh, it'll say a, a link beside the show how to get tickets. Uh, and then the next night we're going to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, and doing the same that package again, Tracy or Noah, Tracy than you. So that's that's going to be a good weekend. Then we get to come home. We've got actually four or five days home next week. So I'm pumped about that. Allegedly, I know you are. Allegedly, right? Until Joey forgets to put something on the calendar and reminds us the day before, and totally screws all our travel plans up. But that's okay. That's what we do. We hit curveballs out here, uh, and uh, we're going to stay home for a few days. Then we're going to Pikeville, Kentucky. As you mentioned earlier, you and I are going to go to the Georgia-Arkansas uh, game in Athens. Uh, and then we're going uh, up to Danville, Virginia, uh, playing a festival up there with old big dog daddy himself, uh, Toby Keith. And um, then i got to go ahead and mention this, too. Uh, Thursday the 7th, uh, I, I, the press is out. It's got to be. We're going back to Arkansas and playing the Boys and Girls Club event in Benton uh, that you and Kate and your family have raised helped raise a bunch of money for them over the years. I know I've been part of some of those dinners. Always a great event. Um, so y'all be looking for that. Uh, we want to make sure to yeah. get that thing as big as we can, raise as much money as we can for the Boys and Girls Club there in well, Saline this is, County. This is our uh, – JR, I don't mean to interrupt you. This is our no, eighth ahead, year buddy. to do this. We missed last year because of COVID. Our yep. eighth year to do this, and we've raised um, over $700,000. we are yeah. we have always done acoustic shows, and we're doing a full band show this year. So our goal, because we have a bigger uh, – capability of having a bigger audience uh is to get over the million dollar mark this year um yes. and and so it's just amazing and i think it you know it speaks volumes of the community here um that they support it and and boys and girls club when i was growing up i, I only thing i knew about it is that that's where we played our basketball games on saturday morning or our t-ball right. games or whatever but they do so much uh for kids that that don't that quite honestly don't have anything back at home and not because their parents don't want them to it's because they can't afford it and so 
there's yeah, after or live in an area where they don't have basketball there's goals. After, and there's fields. after school programs, but Jr. It's not only sports, man. They uh, they feed these kids. They go they go and they help them with their lessons. They feed them. They give them uh, you know an opportunity to go play basketball or baseball or soccer or um, it's just it's it's really a, and a safe place for them to it's be. It's really a, a neat um program for, i mean yeah that i again I, I i was completely uneducated on I, di- I didn't know all of the things that they did but they again they feed them they they keep them yeah, off the awful. street they right they, it, you know and so you know the fact that you know this year we're in our eighth or ninth year we're, we're looking towards raising a million dollars when we're in an area that is not a, a really, you know, highly populated area as, as right. Jr knows to be able to do those type of numbers, uh, to support those kids is, is pretty amazing. Makes me proud to be from here and, and, uh, be a part of, uh, of this because it's, yeah, it's pretty special. Yeah, it's awesome. So that'll be that'll be on uh, October seventh. So y'all make sure to check in on that. Uh, the next night, October eighth, we'll be in Louisville, Kentucky, at the Fourth uh, Street Live, and then uh, Palmyra, oh, uh, Missouri. Excuse me, on October 9th. So yeah, that's our upcoming shows. Uh, by the time this airs, we've got uh, Bismarck tonight, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Friday night, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Saturday next week, Pikeville, Kentucky, on October first, Danville, Virginia, on October third. October 7th, Benton, Arkansas, the Boys and Girls Club event we were just talking about. October 8th, Louisville, Kentucky. October 9th, Palmyra, Palmyra, Missouri. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Y'all get on to me when I get there if I didn't. But it was fun catching up with you guys and gals. We'll have another report next week. May have a guest. Who knows? Uh, always enjoy y'all tuning in with us and spending a little of your day with us. Hope y'all got something out of this episode. Uh, remember to like, rate, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that fun stuff. Uh, so we can continue to do this each and every week. Uh, you go check it out on YouTube. If you've got time, watch it on YouTube. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, share it. I'm going to start asking you guys to help me out with that stuff on social media. Take a click of you watching it. Share it. Use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Let's try to get any of our guys and gals and buddies uh, in country music world that aren't listening already to tune in and listen to us every week. Uh, I know we've uh, we've been trying to mention it to show some. We fell short sometimes, but because uh, I know people every week that say, hey, I didn't even know you had a podcast, you know, and that kind of stuff. So we want to spread the word, so make sure we can keep this thing going for as long as we can. We've enjoyed it so far. And uh, if you got anything else, Just, I'm going to go to the dentist. No, man, you need to go get those uh, those teeth clean. Yeah, gotta, gotta get we got to get out fix. of here. We, we got to go tomorrow. We got to leave tomorrow. We got to go back to work. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, I got to go eat I gotta lunch. Fix, I got to fix my lawn gotta, more today. Too. I got to go get my girls from school. And um, and so it was great catching up with you guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, we can't wait to see you next week. And uh, JR kind of alluded to it. We have a lot of great guests coming up. And uh, over the last – two or three weeks with all the sec and ESPN guys that I've been fortunate to, to meet. We're going to have some of those guys on, um, you know, talking, uh, sec football, college football overall. And we have Lee Bryce coming up. We have Parker McCullen coming up. Um, we got a lot of great uh, we guests. Ta- we talked to a bunch of people that want to. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, sure. Ray's Michael Ray said he wants coming to jump up. on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of great, great guests coming um but uh wanted to catch up with you guys just jr and i today since we just got home and we got to leave tomorrow so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and we're gonna have leanne womack on at some point it's a little quicker than normal but yeah leanne womack yeah Um, Yeah, because i I don't even know i haven't even got that locked in but i'm just putting that out in the universe and we're gonna make that happen miss leanne womack no doubt no doubt got happen all right. Well, thank y'all. We'll see y'all next week. I'm going to get my grill fixed. Justin's going to get the girls. We're getting on the road. We'll see y'all in the show soon. If not, we'll see you here next week on the Justin Moore Podcast. Thanks, y'all. Hey, guys. Today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 21, turn it loose. 
Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Ephesians 4.26 Have you ever taken a grudge to bed with you? I have, and I've never intended to do it again. Sleep and anger make incompatible bedfellows. The anger usually turns to thoughts of getting even and paying back in kind. The plotting can go on until we small hours, and when the sun rises, you've accomplished absolutely nothing except depriving yourself of a good night's sleep. There is a mechanism, a release valve, for you to turn to so that that grudge does not get the best of you. It's called forgiveness. Forgiveness works like this. You don't have to condone a wrongful act, but if you want to have a peace, if you want to have peace in your life, you do have to forget it or forgive it. After all, your thoughts, your thoughts are not really hurting anybody but you. Put aside thoughts of vengeance and harm. Take a deep breath, forgive. Let it go with the knowledge that it is not your place but God's to make all things right. Conversely, if you are the offender, it's your place to ask the person you offended for forgiveness. If you do it before the sun goes down, you'll get a much better night's sleep. Taking ill feelings to bed with you is like trying to sleep with a cactus plant. Let it go. Holding on to a grudge is like holding a tiger's tail. Eventually, it will turn around and consume you. Let's all make the day count. <laughs>